If you're selling gaming PCs on Java, then it's really important that you take the couple of extra steps needed to properly stress test your gaming PC before shipping it off. That way you can reduce the amount of customer issues you may have, you can increase your chances of having a successful sale, and both of those are obviously better for everyone. In today's video, I'll show you a quick and easy checklist that you can steal, and it'll only include totally free software. That way you're 100% confident that your PC is ready for the customer, and they won't have any issues once they start using it. And real quickly, my name is Zach, and as a PC building YouTuber, I've done this process so many times at this point. And here's a very quick overview of all the steps that we're gonna be talking about today. And just as a reminder, we do have a separate video talking about how to properly configure your gaming PC before shipping it. But for this video, we're strictly focused on how to stress test it. So first up for the first stress test, download HW Monitor from CPUID.com and use this software for all of the tests that we're about to talk about. Here you can see the temperatures and usage percentage for each individual component inside the build. And before running any of these stress tests, go ahead and make sure that the idling temperatures for both the CPU and GPU are at a comfortable level. And this is obviously gonna vary depending on what components are inside your build or what your airflow setup is looking like. And if you don't already know what your idling temperature should be, then I would recommend doing a little bit of research on your specific components. Next up, we wanna stress test our CPU first. And remember that stress testing the CPU will test both the component itself as well as your CPU cooling solution at the same time. I would personally recommend using Cinebench R2 23, which you can find at maxon.net. Download that R23 offline installer from the website. And once it's installed, I would go ahead and just start running that multi-core setup right away. By default, this will run your CPU and all of its cores at 100% or close to it for the entire time. And remember to have HW monitor running beside it so you can measure those under load temperatures as well. If the test completes with reasonable temperatures, then take a quick peek at the score you got and verify that it's in the score range for your specific CPU. And if it's good to go, then your CPU and CPU cooling solution are ready to rock and roll. And for bonus points, feel free to run that test a couple of times or put it on a loop for longer than 10 minutes. But for me personally, I've noticed that if I don't have a problem within the first 10 minutes, I'm usually good to go to move on to the next stress test. The next test would be the graphics card stress testing. And this one is obviously super important for those gamers that you're gonna be selling that build to. There's a ton of different software for you to choose from, but the one I use often is either the Heaven or Superposition benchmark that you can download from Unigen's website. There's a lot of different ways to configure how you want this to run, but to keep things simple, I would recommend just adjusting the resolution of the test depending on your GPU, and also make sure that it's not full screen, that way you can view HW monitor at the same time. Once you click start, this test will continue running for a while, and just like with Cinebench, you just wanna make sure that everything looks good, you're not seeing any artifacting or weird glitches, and also that your temperatures stay in a safe range after keeping it under load for around 10 minutes or so. And for the last individual component test, it's typically a good idea to run MemTest 86 to not only stress test, but also do error checking on your RAM config as well. Now, a lot of people can get away without doing this one, but if you wanna try to avoid any memory issues later on down the line, which by the way, is really difficult to troubleshoot over the phone with a customer, then I would recommend using MemTest 86. You can get this software from memtest86.com and you'll actually have to load this one on a USB drive and then boot from it, but from there, it's pretty simple. You can just use the default setting and then let it do its thing. And afterwards, it'll spit out the results and you basically just wanna make sure you're not getting a ton of errors. Now, the one downfall about this one is that it can take a really long time to run sometimes. Most people just let it run overnight and I definitely would not recommend you just staring at the screen because this one could take a while. And finally, for the last stress test, we wanna throw everything that we just tested individually, but now together. And I would recommend using 3 dmarks Time Spy for this one. You can get a free version of this on Steam if you don't have it already. The upgraded version goes on sale quite often and has a ton of extra features by the way, but in a nutshell, this will give you a realistic gaming workload scenario. And that way you can make sure that everything is running efficiently together. And again, make sure that those temperatures are nice and cool. Although this gives the most realistic scenario, I definitely wouldn't recommend skipping the individual tests because it's important to isolate your three major performance components and stress testing them. That way you can quickly and easily take care of any issues that they may be having. Now, before wrapping all this up, I do wanna provide a couple of extra quick tips for you and help you make this process a little bit more streamlined. First, if you can afford or spare an extra external flash drive, then I would put all of the stress test software on there. That way you weren't wasting all that time tracking down and downloading all of the software for each and every build. Bonus points if you have a NAS or network attached storage device setup, that way you could quickly access those files from anywhere on your network. And second, it's important to realize that there's a ton of other stress testing software options out there. And I would highly recommend you experimenting with them to figure out which one works best for you. 
Software like Prime95, Ida64, Furmark, PCMark, and Valley are all super popular as well. So use my list as a guide to get you started, but feel free to build upon that depending on what you think is best for your situation and builds. Hopefully all of this provided you with some insights on how to properly stress test your gaming PC before shipping it off to a customer. If you have any more questions on how to do that, or if you wanna suggest some other piece of software for other people to use, then feel free to join the Jawa Discord server. I'll see you guys over there.